So now we're just gonna deglaze this pan with a little bit of red wine. Well, just a little bit. Hey, welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food. Just as Victorian England was a hotbed for mustachioed serial killers, the internet has become a hotbed for a different kind of crime, a food crime. The World Wide Web has hosted some audacious, some abominable, some downright abhorrent food creations, and today we are focusing on one of my favorites. The snickle. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the Snickers that someone stuffed inside a pickle, right? And then uh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this has gone huge on the internet. Everyone knows the Snickle. Everyone hates the Snickle. But today, Nicole, I'm challenging you to a food crime face-off. We're gonna see who can better redeem this monstrosity because every dish deserves a second shot at life. I agree. You can snag the time codes right over there, and there's a full written recipe in the description below. Food crime or about gosh darn time? Let's get cooking and find out. I like this. I like yeah. that you went right there. I just want to show them. I feel weird because I'm kind of like squatting. Shirt. I'd like to start out by saying I think I have a rock solid plan, not only to redeem this nickel, but also to beat Nicole, because I think Nicole is going to run from the flavor profile of this nickel, and I'm not going to do that. Josh is just unnecessarily aggressive. Let me give this a taste in its raw, unadulterated form. Mm. <laughs> um, wow. The pickle makes the Snickers taste a lot worse. And the Snickers makes the pickle taste a lot worse. It's a food crime for a reason. It's terrible, it's terrible. However, I'm gonna try and make the flavor profiles of peanut, chocolate, caramel, and pickles work together. And how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take this year big old pickle and shove it into this year pork loin. Are you ready, kids? <laughs> Maggie? Aye, aye, Captain. Hmm, I wonder how he's gonna do this. Oh, take yep. a knife. Mm, that's my thought. Just try and make a nice incision right into the middle. Well, I know what you're saying, Josh, how you... Stuff this big old pickle in that little old hole. How are you gonna do that? Oh, that's what the olive oil's for. Bit. Sorry, everybody. This is happening. It's <sighs> kind of like a, a, a keto Wellington, you know, if you're one of the people. He said who it himself. Is See, diet. Wellington. Again it's, with the know, Wellington. It's the Wellington without the carbs. He's just always trying to like gas up Gordon Ramsay. So if you see, I've sort of made like a Chinese finger trap, but out of a whole pork loin instead of my fingers in there, it's gonna be his big old pickle. I'm gonna just kind of widen out the hole right there. If you can kind of see that, you want to kind of stretch out the walls oh, a little no. bit, just so you know we got enough room to stuff the pickle in there. Shame on you. I think a perfectly cooked pork loin is gonna be the great way to bridge the gap because you can do a cocoa rub pork loin, right? You can certainly do pork and pickles, think like a Cuban sandwich. Yeah, try to justify your horrific actions. And so we're gonna try and really marry all these flavors together. You're just gonna drizzle some olive oil over the top of that pickle and kind of get it oh. lubed up a little bit and then oh, sort of no. shove it right in there. Unnecessary. You know, you can see the pickle <laughs> kind of... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> he needs to stop. <laughs> So all I'm gonna do is pop it in a Ziploc bag. Yeah, this is uh, this is wrong. It's gonna be good though, because the pickle is gonna, when you roast it, it's gonna steam its pickly essence throughout the pork. We're gonna get a nice chocolatey rub on it. And that to me is gonna get all the essence of the Snickers in there. And then we got a sauce coming that's really gonna tie it all together. My hands are covered in, 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 in pork and lube and I can't open the pickles. Hold on. Ah, there we go. And now we're just gonna pour all this pickle juice. If you never had pickle brine pork, I mean, it is a fantastic way, even if you're not trying to redeem a heinous food crime that everyone's tagged you in on Twitter 8,000 times in the last two weeks. Uh, pickle brine pork is really, really delicious. It is really delicious. So I think he's doing a great thing there, but stuffing it with the pickle made me a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not gonna lie. There we go. And now we just gotta let this bad boy brine for about eight hours and then Gonna rub it down, gonna roast it off in the oven. We're gonna get on our Snickers sauce work. This is just going not as great as I thought it would, but I do have faith in his abilities as a chef, so we'll see. I think what I'm realizing here is my strategy, as opposed to Nicole's strategy, which I feel like is gonna be to make some pretty good tasting food utilizing pickles and chocolate and certain elements, I've tried to create an even worse food crime <laughs> to redeem this food exactly. crime. It's like how you make one, one crime look less heinous by committing another one. What I'm saying is I got our pickle stuffed pork um, out of the brine and, and you see it's got a kind of alien quality to it. It's just the worst looking thing I've ever seen. We got a cast iron pan heating right now. I'm just gonna get some neutral oil in there. We're gonna sear this off and we're gonna roast it. We're gonna try and get a beautiful mid-rare blush in there but you can't temp check it right in the middle because then you're gonna hit the pickle. Because again, I shoved a giant pickle inside of the pork loin. What we're gonna do, I got a rub right here. It's simple, it's paprika, onion, garlic, a little bit of cocoa, a little bit of cinnamon, you know, kind of playing on some of those kind of like tex mex -y spices. And we're just gonna rub the pork down in it. So that sounds really good, actually, with pork, all of those flavors, especially the cocoa and the paprika sounds judge. really, really good. Because Emily's gonna be judging this, and, and I do want her to smell the pickle and the chocolate right off the bat. I want her 
to be sort of inspired by the terror that I felt eating this nickel, but then overcome with uh, the, <laughs> the amount of love and joy that goes into my cooking. Those are the words that would use to describe a love and joy. I think it's gonna taste good. Pickle pork is good, and I think that the Snickers flavor can work in it. I'm gonna get this searing off fat side down. You can see it right in the cooking twine. All we gotta do, we're gonna let that sear for about three minutes on one side, and then I'm gonna take some garlic. I'm just gonna hit it with a pump heel strike! Pump heel strike! Roll this around, lovely. You see some nice, beautiful that's char on those strings. Here. Do you think the Maillard reaction? That's the scientific name that causes that browning. That's gonna really get you know all that a flavor out of the strings as possible. <laughs> He's talking about the Maillard reaction on strings. So I'm gonna take some butter. I'm gonna toss it in that pan. Good, good, good. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna base. Then we're just gonna get our crushed garlic and rosemary into that butter and just let that really express. Because I want to hit this with air mags. I'm trying to use some classic cooking techniques to go along with these heinous anus ingredients. Heinous anus was my nickname in high school. And just spoon all that aromatic butter. Uh, he used to do that with a little bit more point, finesse. Honestly, he is being really very good. amateur at that base thing. He used to do the spoon flick, you know? He used to do this. But I Come mean, on, I pull mine give me the spoon. Give me the wrist flick, give me the flick like of the wrist. Oh, he's not gonna do it. All right, so this is searing really nice. We got all our butter, all our rosemary, all our garlic in there, all of our aromatics. This is singing, this is going well. Now I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pop it in the oven. And then we're gonna pull it out, and then we're gonna get to our saucin. It looks pretty good to me. Take that, Nicole! Why is he so combative? Are you impressed? Yes, I'm a little impressed. If you thought, wow, Josh, you really rammed that whole pickle into the pork loin, what more could you do? Well, it's this. <laughs> uh, so we got some bacon going. We're kind of making a bacon chocolate sauce. A bacon chocolate sauce? I was trying to figure out like what sauce we'd do on this. I knew I wanted to go chocolate based. I didn't want to desecrate like mole poblano or mole negro, like my two of my favorite dishes. So I found this French sauce called Sauce Gas Gun. So what we're doing is we're adding shallots and garlic to rendering bacon. And for the rest, you'll see what happens. And then on the other side of the pot, we're gonna infuse a whole Snickers bar into this. So I'm just gonna get a whole Snickers melting uh, into some milk. Oh I think and add gonna some nice sick. lovely richness. So I'm gonna let those shallots and the garlic sweat down in the bacon. Then you deglaze it with red wine. So this is like a rustic French sauce that to my knowledge did not have a whole Snickers bar in it, but I also wasn't there. I wasn't there in 17th century France when this was invented, you know, in like a rustic hillside after people had a long day of hunting rabbit or whatever. So it could have had a whole Snickers in it if we're being honest, you know? Oh this another man. place where I think I'm gonna get in a cold. Knowledge of classic French cooking. <laughs> I'm the one who went to culinary school. I have more knowledge of French cooking than you do. All right, so we got the garlic and the shallots sweating in the bacon. This smells great right now, but next to the Snickers, um, it's clashing. It's a clashing smell. I'm not gonna BS you on that. <laughs> so once this is hot, I'm gonna take my tomato paste. I'm gonna add that right there. That's gonna give some more body to the sauce and a little bit of acid. Because I love the fact that the Snickle has combined just pickles, one of the most incredibly acidic foods in the world, with uh, uh, chocolate, uh, one of the foods that you, you typically don't want to combine acid with. But chocolate covered strawberries, I think strawberries are a little bit acidic, right? Am I justifying this too much? A little bit. That's just your whole shtick, man. All you gotta do is do something really, really wrong and then justify it. So now we're just gonna deglaze this pan with a little bit of red wine. Just a little bit. I'm also gonna add some cocoa powder directly to that to really, again, reinforce all that chocolate flavor. I'm gonna reduce the red wine by about half. You always wanna cook out the alcohol whenever you deglaze. Not all the alcohol cooks off, and I know people say it's like a myth, uh, but you don't want that raw wine flavor in there. We're going after the savoriness in that wine, we're going after the acid, we're going for that little bit of sweetness, and you already see it's combining with the bacon fat to give it a sort of lusciousness. This thing's gonna be so luscious on the plate, especially after we hit it, we mount it with a little bit of butter, we got some salt and pepper in there. Is that cool? That was really cool. I wasn't gonna say anything, but it was super sick. The color's looking about where I want it to be. So now what I'm gonna do is I need to get this combined with the Snickers. So I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna pour it into a Vitamix and through a strainer, because I don't wanna blend the bacon in there. I just wanted all that bacon fat for flavor. And then you got some nice, Wine bacon for snacking. Yeah, I knew he was gonna say that. Save it for snacking. That might be the best part of the dish. You should take that and sprinkle it on the over the top. That's what I would do. And I'm gonna take that sweaty Snickers milk. We're gonna pop that in there. Now we're just gonna blend it. Godspeed. I don't know how the nougat's gonna react in the blender, but we're about to find out. I forgot about the nougat. Ah, oh, it just looks like a milkshake now, which is pretty cool. Ew, bro. All right, what we have is a milkshake consistency right now. We're gonna get it back into the pot and we're gonna reduce this for about 20 minutes. And then we're gonna mount it with butter and it should just turn into a nice luscious pig, pig milk sauce for our pickle pork. Pig milk sauce to the pickle pork. Pig milk pickle. <laughs> Your move, Nicole. So the dish is gonna finally come together and I'm very curious to see how he's gonna plate this up. I have an idea. He's probably gonna put some pickle slices on it. Uh, probably gonna put some like crushed peanuts, maybe isolate some nougat. All right, so if you can see, we got our pork roast. It's out, it's fully roasted, it's resting. And now we got the sauce here. It's reduced, it's luscious. All we gotta do 
is add some butter to it. I'm gonna add it slowly, take it off the heat, whisk it in there, let the butter melt. We're trying to get like a nice luscious coat on that. Oh yeah, we're good. That sauce is done. That is looking nice. <laughs> now I'm gonna slice up this pork. Let's see what it looks like. Take off the end There's here. There's gonna be a lot of brown on this plate. I hope he's gonna incorporate some oh, kind of color. Oh, the pickle juice is just leaking out. And look at that. You ever seen something like that? I never seen something like that. <laughs> Golly, look at that pickle juice coming out of that pork. That is, whew. Well, hey, no turning back now. Looks like an eyeball. <laughs> Slice this into some medallions. Oh my God, he knows he's made a big mistake. There we go, look at that. Beautiful, elegant pork medallions. Love that for us. Oh, I hate this for us. So we got our pork medallions. I'm gonna take some of the sauce. Butter is emulsified beautifully in there. This is so just shiny. Like a BP oil spill. Give us some cool plating techniques, man. Do some, yeah, okay, there we go. Swivel, 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 swivel. There we go, just a bed of sauce for the pork to rest on. I really wanna get Snickers, pickle, and pork in every bite. I'm, you are gonna make that happen. Lovely. We have different definitions of lovely. Now, we will take Maybe just a few pork medallions. Oh my god, it looks like a calf's go eyeball. Right oh my the god. Top of our sauce. <laughs> sort of nestle that in there. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh my god, if someone served that to me, I would be horrified. We're just gonna take a couple chopped peanuts and kind of get them around the sauce again. We're oh reifying the Snickers theme here. I want to get a little bit of crunch. She's so silly. A little silly. bit of texture. And then now, what we're gonna do, because again, I'm gonna get a little bit of Snickers zest on there. So I'm gonna take a whole Snickers bar and we're just gonna zest it right on top of pork. <laughs> again, when you zest a Snickers, you only want the outside. The inside is gonna be mostly caramel and nougat. So we're just gonna get some zest all around oh this plate. God. It doesn't look horrific. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. I don't know. Hold I can on. see the appeal of this up. dish. It's not for me. Here we have our pickle stuffed, pickle brine, pork roast, dusted in cocoa. We got our chocolate red wine sauce Gascon. This is the dish that's gonna redeem the snickel and ultimately beat Nicole. Nicole, you impressed? Are you not entertained, Nicole? I thought I'd be more impressed, sorry. I know she's entertained. I get her every time. <laughs> yeah, he knows. Uh, I'm out, peace. Prepare to get your booty beat. All right, let's get this snickle party started, shall we? I've never had one of these before. It looks very intimidating. That looks illegal. It is intimidating, it should be illegal. Oh yeah, big old bite. I'm gonna swallow it. You know what I am? You're a warrior, Nicole. A trooper. <laughs> Don't you spit out that snickle. It's actually not the worst thing I've put in my mouth, surprisingly. Okay. But I have a great plan on how to incorporate the chocolate, the pickle, the sour, the sweet, all of those flavors to combine into a beautiful, harmonious dish. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make jardinera confetti. Now I know what you're thinking, what does that mean, jardinera confetti? I'm gonna take all the flavors of a classic jardinera, and here we have, I have nougat in my tooth. Soft teeth ain't good with this nickel. So I'm gonna take equal parts vinegar and water that's boiling away. I'm gonna add some salt, and sugar, get in there. This is Beautiful. smart, because she's taking the and theme of pickle, but she's not going straight pickle like I am. Immediately, it's less literal and already more clever than what I'm doing. And then right here, we have some beautifully chopped vegetables. We have red bell peppers, carrots, celery, and these are cauliflower stems. These are the ends of the cauliflower that no one eats, but I'm showing you how to repurpose them. Like what a hipster no-waste restaurant out of the mythical kitchen, I love this. Then you just throw them right in there, all at the same time. This is gonna get a very, very quick boil because we want these still to stay nice and crunchy and bright, and we don't wanna kill them. We don't wanna overcook them. So we're just gonna let that go. I think I'm gonna win this competition sheerly based False. on my colors. I mean, <laughs> it's a rainbow, baby. You would rely on colors to win the competition for you. No, no, no. It's beautiful. And now we're gonna add some of the green with our big old pickle. Nicole's an incredibly talented cook. She is going to, she is not going to have the shock and awe that I have. And then in this jar, we're going to add bay leaf, some pepper, some red pepper flakes. And then I'm gonna fish out some of my beautifully cooked veggies. I mean, look That's at smart. that smart, getting some extra aromatics in there to really like, you know, counter the flavor of just pure pickle. We're just gonna fill this jar up. They're beautiful vegetables. She's doing a lot of smart things that, that I really respect, things that I did not do. She's not necessarily running from the flavor of pickle, she's just changing it ever so slightly just to be a little bit more elegant. I'm not scared yet. Cause I have no idea where our dish is going. Try your best to do this nicely. Try your best, but it's okay if it gets on the counter a little bit. Drink Oof. it, drink it, coward. Close it up. And that's our secret little jardinera. Mm, just our secret little jardinera, just between you and me. We're just gonna let this hang out in the fridge for like an hour and it's gonna get beautiful and pickly and flavorful. And this is gonna beat Josh's butt. False, nothing can beat my butt. My butt is incredibly resilient. I do a lot of squats. Nicole does no squats, point me. Hey, welcome back. I don't know if you went anywhere, but I just wanted to 
Welcome you back. Thank you. Because guess what we're gonna do now? We got a Snickers Soka coming up. So what are you, a pan Mediterranean restaurant from 2006? Got her. A Soka is a beautiful, glorified chickpea pancake that's uh, very popular in Italian cuisine. But we're gonna put in some beautiful, warm autumnal spices in there to really brighten it up and help be a segue to the Snicker. So I'm gonna cut this Snicker up really fine. This is an interesting twist to me. I love Snickers. It's not my favorite candy bar. My actual favorite candy bar of all time is a score bar, because I'm an old woman. Nicole came out of the womb as an 80 year old woman. She is Benjamin buttoning in front of our eyes right now. I love butterscotches. I love a good word. There's butterscotch. She listens to oldies all the time in the kitchen. This all makes sense with the butterscotch candy. I'm gonna pull out a preheated cast iron pan. Wow, that was a cool little dance move I did. And then I'm going to put some oil in there because when we throw our soca in, we want it to get nice and sizzly. So we're gonna add a few glugs of olive oil, then throw this right back in there. So she's cooking almost like a Dutch baby, so she's gonna get some nice lift on that soca. Take some peanut butter powder. This is actually one of Josh's favorite ingredients, I think. I think he puts peanut butter powder in like all of his smoothies. Yeah, I put it in my brogurt. It makes my brogurt thicker. It makes it like brooding. That's bro pudding. It's got protein powder and peanut butter out in it. This is how I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna beat you by using your own things, man. That's how I beat you. Then I'm gonna take all of my beautiful spices. We have white pepper, cinnamon, ground ginger, cumin, and salt. This is smart. Getting the there. cumin and the ground ginger in there is gonna be a real key to like elevating the Snickers to a savory component. Olive oil? She doesn't seem to have as much Snickers. Like she, she's gonna put that into the Soka. I'm curious what her protein's gonna be on this. You want kind of a cake batter texture. And we're not adding any leavening in it too because it doesn't need any leavening. It's gonna be this beautiful crisp on the bottom with all that warmed oil and it's gonna have a fluffy exterior as well. I'm plenty sexy with a fluffy exterior. As you can see, that's nicely mixed up. Whoa! Oh my God, did you she's see that? She doesn't know where she is. She's out on her feet and she's about to be down for the count. Toss in my Snickers. I think it's gonna taste good though. I'd like to try your dish. Be gentle, fold it in, cause you don't wanna break up the Snickers. What if, okay, Martha Stewart ass out here, don't wanna break up the Snickers in your Indian spice chickpea pancake. There we go, looks good. Swivel it around in there. And then we pour in our soca. There we go. I bet she's gonna serve it right in that cast iron pan. She's gonna go like a, like a TGI Fridays with their loaded tater tots on a Thursday night. That's a fun time. And then that's gonna go in the oven for about, mm, maybe like five, 10 minutes. And then we'll have a beautiful soca. But wait, there's more. What's more, Nicole? What you doing, girl? Okay, let's see what our soca looks like. What's going on with Nicole's sweater? It's like half sweater, half suit of medieval armor, and I like it. So this is what our beautiful bubbling soca looks like. You can see the edges are nice and browned and all of that nougat is starting to seep out. It kind of low-key looks like Dr. Pimple Popper. Oh, that's rich, because she talks about Dr. Pimple Popper while we're cooking and eating all the time. Do not like it, do not enjoy that. So I'm gonna do some pickle fried shrimp. It's really, really simple. It's gonna be made in like, Two seconds flat, I'm gonna roll up my sleeves because it's gonna get kind of dirty in here. Oh, suddenly the nice sweater, not a great idea, Nicole. So I just have some beautiful de-veined peeled shrimp. I removed the tails too, because there's nothing I hate more when you go to a restaurant and you're eating shrimp with a fork and knife and there's a tail. I don't understand. Like, why would you leave something inedible? Nicole doesn't like being very simply inconvenienced in a small way. That makes sense that she doesn't like that. So I'm just gonna throw these into the pickle brine and let these hang out for just a little bit because I wanna infuse the pickle flavor in there, but I don't wanna actually Pickle my shrimp. Coward, I let my pork sit in pickle juice for two days. <laughs> my secret ingredient, Tony Shashri's, ladies no! and gentlemen. That's no, right. no, 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 unfair advantage, unfair referee. Tony, unfair Dan advantage. She's not Shashri's allowed to use Tony C's. Is going in here, and this is how I'm going to win oh, too. God. I'm going to win because I <coughs> cough it up, Nicole. That's how I'm going to beat your butt, Josh. You hear that? You hear that? I heard you. I heard you loud and clear. So our shrimp is nicely infused with all that flavor. Well, let's just go ahead and whisk this it's up. It's not infused. No, there's no way any pickle flavor is getting into that shrimp. Sorry, She's just putting fried shrimp on there because she knows that Emily loves Vegas buffets. We're gonna go ahead and throw these into our flour mixture. Give them a nice toss. Kind of pack it deeply in there. I'm gonna do each one individually because it is a little bit of an unorthodox frying method. But this is an unorthodox ingredient I have to work with. The snickle? Why did we decide on the snickle? There's so many food crimes out there that are like a little bit easier to do. You just pick the most like screwed up one. That is correct. We picked the most screwed up one because I wanted to challenge Nicole. I wanted to see how she rises to the occasion. You guys are just trying to make me lose. This is Josh's show and you guys just want Josh to win, but no! I'm gonna win. Don't make excuses. No excuses in the kitchen, Nicole. Now let's throw our shrimpies in. Let's go, beautiful. Get nice and crispy. 
Who? I hate that she just baby talked. Her and Trevor baby oh, talk in the kitchen all the time and I can't stand it. Twevo, can you do the dishes? One thing I know about Emily, she's a wild card. True. Today I was really nice to her, so I think that's gonna like help me win. You know what I mean? Unfair advantage. Let's see how scrimpies are doing. Mr. Scrimp, look beautiful. Mr. Scrimp, look really sexy. Mr. Nope. Scrimp. Pickled pork with pig milk is sexy. You no, know, I'm not a very combative person, and I don't believe in competition that much, but I will crush him! Competition is the lifeblood of innovation, but also comparison is the thief of joy. So I'm miserable, but innovative. So my shrimp is gorgeously cooked. We got a nice fry on there, a nice thick coating of batter, which is exactly what I wanted. Now we're gonna plate it up! You guys excited? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah! Cause I will crush you, Josh! No, don't crush me! Here we are, guys. All that hard work looks like this. Isn't that wild? Wow, okay. stunning. So let's open up our Jardinera Confetti. Oh, also how I'm gonna win. I have cool names. Jardinera Confetti? Don't you wanna eat that? I have pig milk. That's another tactic. You gotta give interesting names and styles to your food. You can't just like pork tenderloin, you know? No, it's, it's pickle pork with pig milk. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of this and I'm gonna spoon it into some Japanese mayo and kind of make a pseudo remoulade sauce okay, to go with Okay, this is how she's avoiding the dryness here. So it's gonna be that nice creamy saucy element along with our fried element and our fresh element with our celery leaves and that beautiful caramelly, I don't even know what to call it. I don't even know, it's beautiful. I mean, look at these holes. It's just a beautiful plate of food. With Mayonnaise, chocolate, pancakes, and shrimp. Leaves. We have both made utter grotesque monstrosities, but I think they can redeem this nickel. I'm gonna go ahead and add in our shrimps delicately placed all over the top in a nice little cluster. These are very, very crispy shrimp. Listen, do you hear that? Come on. Ooh, it's giving me the tingles. Okay, and then we're gonna add in our celery leaves for garnish. That I should have put shrimp. something green on my plate. I'm all shades of brown. Nice. I'm 50 shades of brown. And then we're going to add our remoulade right in the center here. Nice little dollop of it. Mm, that's smart. Nice little creamy dollop. I just don't think she has dollop. the chocolate and pickle flavor running throughout there. Gorgeous. Because unless you get a bite of that soak of pancake underneath, you're not gonna get any Snickers. Mine's all throughout. It's unavoidable. I'm gonna take some of the confetti and just sprinkle it on top for some gorgeous color. Okay, I see you, Nicole. I'd like to eat that dish. Hot diggity! That's a beautiful plate of food, ladies and gents. I will crush you, Josh! If she you. dies, she you. dies. I will beat you! This is my day! I've been told what the name of this is, that it is a snickel. That's but correct. I don't mm -hmm. know what that means. <laughs> well, look down, lady. It's just a Snickers bar inside of a pickle. That was our first reaction, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gross. That's fried, so that makes me hopeful. God dang it. This is very pretty, <laughs> but I'm less hopeful. The one time I don't fry something, the one time I don't I fry I knew something. it. All right, to start this and be fair, I'm going to eat the original, the original uh, Snickle. Why'd you put it in quotes? She's not having a good time. This feels like a makeshift pregnancy test. If I like this, then we know. Oh, oh. my god. Oh. Who's gonna be the godparent? <laughs> oh god, it smells weird. Yes. Hang on. Yeah, that's a big bite. Uh, big that's a big, big bite. bite. She <laughs> might Swallow like it. it. She's a wild card. Swallow it. Oh no. I like it. <laughs> no! That favors me. <laughs> How do you know? Because I have- Maybe my dish is tastier than yours. I don't want to be a single mom right now. I'll take care of you, baby. <laughs> Give me that baby, Emily. So what is this in the She's bottom? She's excited to eat my dish. It's like a crispy pancake. See, she already knows. It's easy to read, my, my dish. Yeah. Nice. You know like, what you're getting. But okay. mine's physically Ooh, jarring. It's like a chewy, crispy pancake. This looks like a shrimp. Is it a shrimp? Yes, Emily, it's a I shrimp. What else right would it there. be? She thinks I fried a snickle in that shape? What am I, an <laughs> alchemist? Mmm, it's like a pickle. Mm-hmm, what was that? She said, it's like a pickle. I mean, the shrimp's really good. Shh. Let it happen. The shrimp is really good. Shrimp is really good. Should and the pickle's pretty good. I don't taste a lot of the Snickers, though. I you hid from the Snickers. It's there. It's a cowardly move. Oh, the pancake. It's got like... It has Snickers in it. Looks like somebody made a little disc of Snickers. <laughs> there we go. See, now she's picking up what I'm putting down. It took her long enough. Not bad. See? Okay. I'm right. just not but... giving a lot of pickle Snickers. Mine, that's all you're gonna get. This might be disgusting. Okay. I think Who knows? I'm trying to get a nut. Get that nut, Emily, get, get that nut. nut. I think I got a good amount of this. I'm guessing it's chocolate sauce. Yeah, that disgusting Love it, chocolate Emily. sauce. No, it's that's great. Disgusting. It's beautiful. <gasps> Her eyes are popping. Yeah, because they're it's disgusting. No, it's great. Pretty good. Yes, 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 Emily, let's go. Man, a woman of class and culture. I feel like the thing that does this, but then also 
achieves something really tasty and new is is this guy. Oh, I mean, man. go. Let's go, Emily. Let's go, now. Let's go Emily. Let's go. It's not easy to make this into a thing. Woo! Yes! God, you yes! sound like I thought you were a dog. No, I won. I beat Nicole. She hid from the Snickers. It did not work. Oh, I put the I'm Snicker sorry, Nicole. pickle. I've never hated in there. you more, Emily. And that is what the heck I'm about. Emily, you are a woman of class and taste and distinguishment. Emily, do you think we redeemed the Snickle today? Because this is a hey, this is some heinous, anus warfare. Well, what's crazy is I would never choose to eat this. <laughs> no like, one would. I'm never yeah, no gonna, one would, yeah. I'm never gonna seek it out, but honestly, V, quiet down over there. <laughs> We're making a show. I mean, I think that I could see some place actually having it and then being like, this is like, it's the Chocolat restaurant. <laughs> so I don't know, I think, yeah, you did. Emily, thank you so much for participating in this very strange experiment. Nicole, thank you so much for uh, uh, competing and valiantly losing. And thank you all so much for stopping by the Mythical Kitchen. We got new episodes out every week. We got new episodes of our podcast that Nicole and I host together very happily every Wednesday, wherever you get your podcasts. Hit us up on Instagram at Mythical Kitchen under hashtag dreams become food, just like Sean did. Sean made the Mountain Dew chicken wings from TikTok. He made it for the Super Bowl and he said he always does a wing sampler every year and that everyone was initially very creeped out by the neon green wings. <laughs> Naturally. But he said the sweet heat really hit home for a lot of people. So Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you to all the people who are hitting us up under that hashtag. Keep doing it, and you got a chance to be featured on the Mythical Kitchen. And let us know in the comments what other food crimes you want to see us redeem. See if Nicole can get redemption. She can't. I'm unstoppable. I'm a dead. I will crush you next time. Oh, mommy, daddy, no fighty. The Mythical Trucker hat is literally the only hat I wear, and I am not just saying that because this is an ad, so get yours now at mythical.com.